So I am going to make the world's uh, fastest bracelet. So this is inspired by a um, a Pinterest a, a Pinterest post that I saw the other day, and I thought this would make the cutest little bracelet ever. So um, I'm going to throw this together in just mere seconds. Uh, so we have one meter. Now, if you're going to make this yourself, you will probably end up needing a little less. But I always, for me, I started with a meter because I sell them by the meter. So I figured let's just show you what a meter and then, you know, you can always, uh, if you're making it yourself, you can use a little less. So we're going to use a meter of 1.5 millimeter um, leather. And this will not be a kit. So you can uh, always just buy the parts we have here. And we're going to be using one of our lovely heart buttons. And this is ABB981, and they're only 50 cents. So if you're looking for these, um, that's ABB981. And then you will we'll need one of our uh, barrel knot tubes. And then you will need uh, some sort of glue. Um, you can use like GS Hypo or, you know, whatever kind that you like. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't use it on camera because everything ends up all over the place, but I will show you where I will put the uh, glue. All right. So that's all you need for this cute little bracelet. So let's see how fast. Okay. What time is it? It's uh, 155. 155. So let's see. Not that I'm going to try and go super fast, but I want to show you that you can make this pretty darn fast. So we're going to marry up the two ends of our leather and we're going to run it through your um, heart button and pull that down to the middle all right so there we go and then i'm going to look at my sample on my arm to remember what the heck i did because i made it like okay yeah <laughs> so i made it right before and i was like i don't even know what i'm doing today all right so now we just have that in the middle and now i'm going to do a barrel knot just on the outside of this so i am going to turn it over so I can see my leather like that. I'm going to place my barrel knot tube in between and I'm going to do three wraps. So I take my outer one, I come to the inside and wrap towards my left hand three times. And then I'm going to hold on to that so it doesn't go awry. And this is our, um, uh, what is this? It's not vintage. It's, um, what's the name of these leathers? Natural. This is the natural turquoise that I'm working with in case you're wondering what color I'm working with. All right, so now you can see that that is down there. So I am going to push that up a little bit. But where I want to make sure is that it's on the outside of the button like that. So I don't want to have it smushed up the back of the button. I want to make it so that it shows on the outside. If that's, Does that make sense to everybody? That when I tighten it up, I want it to be to the outside like that. Okay, so I'm going to use Miss Savannah's arm now. So um, now to get this uh, so that it fits you. So you're gonna, if you're gonna make these to um, uh, sell, you're gonna probably wanna make multiple uh, sizes, but for your own, you're going to take your, can you lift it up off the table? Mm -hmm. And you're going to wrap it around your wrist like that. And you're going to mark right here, like just right on the outside of that button. So right there is where I'm going to put my next uh, barrel knot. So I'm going to just sort of mark that in my brain and I'm going to do three wraps. Ooh, it's getting warm in here now. Yeah. <laughs> it's cooking. I kind of like it. I'm sweating. All right. So, and I know I have to cover that up with my hands, but you kind of have to. All right. So now before I tighten that up, you can see how one side is tight and the other side is has some slack in it. So I want to pull that opposite one so that they're both nice and tight. And then I'm going to come back up, put my thumbnail behind that, and I'm going to push. Now I want to make um, it big enough to fit over this button. Now this button, the way it has to go in, it has, so you, you want to make sure that you've gone wide enough. If you only go with this way, it's going to be really hard to get your button in there. So I suggest kind of going on a bit of an angle and you're going to put your um, next barrel knot here. So we're going to go around three times. And this just looks, it's so simple, but it looks so cute on. As soon as I made it, I put it on. I was like, oh, I like that. I'm totally going to wear mine every day. All right. So I'm just going to tighten that up. But before I tighten it, I just want to make sure that the um, button fits in there. That's probably a little bit big, but for sake of time, I'm going to just push it back that way. 
There we go. Yeah, that's probably a little bit on the large side, but you know, I wouldn't, I don't worry about it right now. Just, you know, this is just one of those things to kind of show you how you can make this. So now I should have had a pair of cutters, but I'm just going to use these. So I'm just going to trim that off. And then I will take some glue off camera after. I'll put a dot right there and a little dot of glue right there and let that set up. And then when you have it on, what I will tell you is to try and get this button on the first time is a little bit um, hard because it needs to get, the leather needs to get sort of broken in. But here's mine on my wrist. Look how cute that is. It is really cute. Yeah, super, super cute. So I'll put a picture up um, on the video later on. But look at how cute that is. And this cost $1.75 for the, that was under five minutes. It took you four minutes and 20 seconds to make. Wow. So there you go. You can make this super, super quick and easy. Um, so it costs for, if you buy the leather from us, it's $1.75 a meter. And I had this much left over. So you could probably cut a little bit off and then 50 cents for the um, button. And you just end up with a really cute little uh, bracelet that I absolutely love on. It's really cute. Yeah, it's just simple, really, really simple. So um, yeah, who needs scissors? Not me, right? I never have them. <laughs> I just thought it was just kind of fun. It doesn't have a whole lot of hooplas. Now, let's say that you really wanted to make this, but you wanted to add a few extra things. Um, you may want to cut a little bit more leather than a meter, but I also thought what you could do to make it a little bit more fun is every so often you could put a barrel knot. So you could do a barrel knot here, barrel knot there, barrel knot there, you know, like I would space them out, like maybe measure how um, around your wrist the length is, and then maybe put a couple barrel knots in or just put one in the middle or, you know, so if you wanted to embellish it a little bit, you totally could. But I thought that it was just um, perfectly cute the way that it is. Does it fit you? Let me see. We'll see. <laughs> Hang on your oh. there. All right. See if I can get it on her. It's always fun trying to put jewelry on somebody else. Yeah. Especially when you're on camera, right? Oh, yeah. There. Oh, there we go. That's Cute. Perfect. Yeah. So we're going to um, make a quick bracelet here using a few different things. So we have um, this fern link from one of the newer uh, lines from Tierra Cast. And the code on this is 94-3241. Um, and then this is their silver one. Uh, we have, have limited stock on this color, but we have a lot of the other colors. So this isn't going to be a kit. Uh, Wednesdays are generally about um, just showing you some ideas. So it's things that aren't like maybe perfected. Uh, I've never really done this before. I'm just kind of like throwing stuff together to show them to you. So we'll be using the Fern Link. And then I don't know what this one is. Is this uh, 946021? Um, I can't remember. Yeah. So I'm also going to be using um, just some uh, 10 millimeter uh, ribbon ends. We have gluing ends that would be much nicer, but I, uh, 6202. 6202 for the uh, 94-6202 for the toggle. Um, so I'm just gonna use the little 10 millimeter ribbon ends, but you can use different, um, we have some really nice gluing ends that um, are much nicer. Uh, I just didn't really wanna waste them today on, on the project. Um, I'm also going to be using some uh, of our four millimeter jump rings. So these are four millimeter uh, and an 18 gauge. So they're nice and strong. And then I think I'm going to use a couple different sizes here. I'm just kind of like winging it and see if it'll work. This is 6-94517, I believe. And these are 8-94514. So we've got an eight and a six. And then I've got about seven inches of our rustic color 10 millimeter flat leather and then I think I have I think I grabbed two pieces of three ply sorry I need a drink mm. <laughs> it's talking it's really dry in here today mm. I've noticed even it's, I'm like it's probably because the air conditioner is going full force I also think I'm covered in dust right now from, <laughs> from what we were doing earlier one of our videos that you'll see later today yeah you'll laugh <laughs> all right so I have two pieces of three ply um Irish wax linen and I think I cut these about 40 inches but you know you can kind of do your own thing and we sell all of this stuff if you're wondering if we do we always get those questions and we do and then I just uh, as far as tools I'm going to be using this little clip just to make my life easier for showing you what to do and then I'll be using a pair of bent chinos pliers and a pair of pliers 
And then some sort of cutters. You know, I never have scissors around, so I'll just use these. So that'll work. <laughs> you haven't used those on your nails today. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I had the worst manicure ever, and I was trying to deconstruct it, and you know, so that it wouldn't look terrible. All right. So the nice thing about these fern links is that they are very malleable, and um, you can actually just bend it with your fingers. So you can kind of um, once you get it on to the piece that we're gonna, the way I'm gonna show you how to do it, you can kind of bend it so it's got a little curvature so that it sits nicer on your wrist. So I wouldn't go crazy, but if you have a pair of, um, do you, can you grab me those, um, see the pliers that are at the front with the K on them? This is another little trick that you can use. If you have a pair of nylon jaw pliers like this, you can um, just manipulate it a little bit by turning ever so slightly and you can see that just instantly put a little bit of a bend on there so i just don't want to do too much of a bend while i'm trying to get this made but i i wouldn't leave it flat because then it's going to just sit on your wrist kind of flat i would put a little bit of a bend in it uh before you start um because you don't want to mar your leather but you could actually just take it like this and just kind of you know gently mold it a bit okay so I'm going to take one of the pieces of my Irish wax linen and fold it in half. And cross your fingers, girls, because I don't know what I'm doing today. I just... Did you actually get it to work at one point? No, I just... Project? This is a new project. Oh. I was just kind of like, you know, sometimes on Wednesday, I'm just doing a million things. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't always have time. All right. So I'm going to take it in half and I'm going to kind of make a little pinch because I want to take this and go up through. And what I want to do is then separate this and then pull that remaining string through. I'm just making a lark's head knot. So it'll have like two sides to it, this side or that side. I think I like that side be better. So maybe instead of going up, you can go down. That'll, that'll work a little bit better. Okay, so this is where we're going to kind of have to create like a little jerry rig with this little clip I've got. So what I want to do is kind of find my center. So you could actually get all technical and get a, you know, um, um, a ruler and measure on either side. You could just fold the piece in half. Kelly, no, you don't want to, you don't want to put a bend in no, the, no, fold the leather in half. You don't want to fold the leather in half. You'll have Not a bend totally in it. totally in half, but just like. Well, yeah, you could, but. To find the center. Yeah, I guess you could, but that would require like doing that. So I'm just going to do that. Because <laughs> I want. centered. No, I know. Well, okay. Well, like. So you can't, well, you can't really do that. Yes, you so, can. Well, if I go like this. Yeah, that's the rough center. Well, that's kind of where I had it. Nope. <laughs> hey, whatever. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I'm not used to having a annoying, gallery? annoying person next to me. All right. <laughs> so, you missed me. <laughs> I totally did. Okay. So what I'm going to do is try to get this attached here some way. So I basically just want to bring this to the back. And I'm just going to kind of tie like... Not a, like a big knot. I'm just going to tie like a, got a, too many strings here. All right. Let's just. Have two. <laughs> too many things in my brain. Too, too many strings. Yeah. All right. Just tie like a little thing. Because what you just want to do is get it to the back. Because then we're going to start doing some, some embellishing. Okay. And let's hope that this works. Snow. You had snow. Yeah. Uh, if you know in me. In South Africa. South Africa. I'm not really a, um. Oh, thank you. I'm not really a uh, design on the fly kind of gal. I really like to have an idea before I, you know, really start designing. But uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. So, all right. So now we're going to do uh, some macrame. So if you've watched me do my macrame before, you know that it's just P's and Q's. So what I'm going to do on my right side is I'm going to kind of roll this because with Iris wax linen, you can roll it and it'll make it a bit more of a point. And I think what I'm going to try, let's see how this works. I'm going to take an eight, a six, and then an eight. And you could make this with delicates. Could you? I don't know. Maybe. All right. So I'm going to make my P. I'm, I'm just going to pretend that the, the beads are not even there. So I'm going to make my P over top of the leather. And then I'm going to take the one that's on the left and come over the left like that. And then I'm going to go underneath and bring it up through the P. And before I tighten it, I'm going to swing those beads around. So I'll kind of do two things at one time here. So I'll see if this works. Well, that's neat. 
what I was trying to do was figure out a way of getting this um, fern link on there um, without having to punch holes. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so that's one half of a, um, did I call that square knot? Yeah. Macrame. Yeah, macrame square knot. So now I'm going to take my left one and make my Q. So basically it's the backwards one. It's not going to have any beads in it. And then I'm just going to bring it through this side. Does that make sense to everybody the way that I did that? And I will show you that again. So, so this second one just kind of um, makes it stick on there. Okay. So then I'm going to do that again. So you always want to load the beads when you're on the same side. Yeah. So I'm going to load my beads on my P side, on my right side. If you're left-handed, you could switch it around, do whatever. I just wouldn't put uh, beads on both sides. Right. Um, like I wouldn't put it on the Q side because it would just make it too bulky. Okay, so I've got my P, so it's like a P there. It comes over top, and then I take the left-hand one and go over top and then underneath and then bring it up through that hole. And then like that. I like that. And then I kind of pull tight. Oh, yeah, that looks kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And then my other one, which is going to lock it in, is the Q. So that just goes sort of backwards. It's like a backwards P or a Q. So it goes like that, and then it goes up through that hole, and then tighten that up. Okay, and now I'm going to do it on the other side, because I'm not sure how far I want to go with that. So I'm going to just kind of work back and forth and see. Um, so I'm taking my other, other piece and folding it in half and creating a little lark's head. <clears throat> now I'm going to go down through this one. I want to make this at home now. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think it's going to be kind of cute when we're done. We just said, and you know, this is one of those things that um, you can probably just embellish the heck out of it and, you know, go nuts. Yeah, there's so much you could do with it. Right? Cause look at that so far. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of cute. That would look really cute with one of our infinity symbols too. Yeah, right I mean, you could, you could use anything. I have, um, oh my goodness, I need another drink. Goodness gracious. Um, I have a new piece that I'll be showing uh, soon, hopefully. Tessa just went away on holidays, and she's my photographer. So, but I have a new one that would be really cute with this. Okay, is so this I'm just a, this is ten millimeter, right? This is ten millimeter yeah. leather. Okay, so the first one we're just going to take and uh, tie it in a knot in the back. Goodness, there's like now there's really stuff everywhere, but I won't give you a hard time now. Yeah. Okay, so get those out of the way. So I'm just going to tie that. You could tie it like a double knot there just to, you know, if you wanted, just to make sure it's nice and tight. But I think it's it's fine. Just kind of move it to where you want it. Boss it around. Make it do what you want it to do. Okay. So now I'm going to put my beads on. And, of course, once I'm, you know, when I'm sort of finalizing everything, I'll maneuver everything into the, the spot that I want it. But for now, we're just kind of uh, creating and constructing and seeing how it works. And I think this is going to work. You know, like I said before, I really didn't know if this was going to look good or if it was going to work. But sometimes you just got to play. Okay, so I put my beads on. And I do my P. Always go over top and then up through the hole. Like normally I would just work on one side at a time. But because I don't know what I'm doing, I want to um, make sure that I like what I'm doing before I continue on yeah look at that cute mm -hmm. every once in a while i come up with something that i really like <laughs> now you're like dang i should have made this on a monday for a monday video yeah well i could always redo it but all right yeah and that second um square knot just kind of locks it in so we'll do another oops I'm sorry oops I'm pulling it out of your oh. way <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of stuff in the way. So so far, it seems to work really well with the eight and a six and an eight. But you could use all eights. You could use all sixes. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want. That's the nice thing about creating your own jewelry, is that you can kind of do um, whatever you want. Okay. And I find that you know macrame for me, I do, I like to do it in my hand. Um, some people like to pin it onto a board. So you kind of have to find your happy place. Um, 
like what works well for you. Um, I find for me that I like to just kind of, I, I macrame just like this, just in my hand and just pull things up like that. I find by having it on a board makes it just so much harder for me, but I know it's probably easier for you guys to see. So that's where we're at so far. I'll do two more on each, like one on each side. Yeah. So you have three on each side. Oh, yeah. But you really could do the whole loop. Yeah, you could do, like, you could go the whole way down. But I wanted to, that's why I wanted to do one side and then work on the other side and see what it looked like. Because um, I didn't know how far down I wanted to go. Kelly, I'm just going to interrupt here. Um, Sharon Lane, the, the things in the mystery bag are only able to be purchased inside the mystery bag. We don't yes. sell them in singles. No, not a single they thing. they are a lot of uh, rare or discontinued. Yeah, they're just things items. that I, I can't get. I can't get again. Mm -hmm. So um, there is not a single thing in the mystery bags that is available on the website. They're all just mystery bag stuff. Yeah. And we even have some leftovers, but <clears throat> I wasn't happy with the leftovers as far as creating mystery bags with them. So we'll wait till we get more stuff. So. Yeah, I like that with the three. With three on there? Mm -hmm. I like odd numbers though. Yeah. Unless it's like the volume on the radio. Yeah, that looks kind of cute. They're kind of bunching mm -hmm. up into like a little cluster. I quite like that. So, you know, I didn't know how much I, I would need. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this all the way down. But actually, that would look really cute all the way down. You know what this would look really cute with? Is you trim here and you fold this and it's a necklace piece. A pendant. Like that? No. So I would trim this part. Yeah. And then put a bail on it and have it like a little pendant. Yeah, I don't know how you'd get a... You'd have to like jerry-rig that to... Well, don't we have a thing that you can glue in? So I guess you wouldn't fold it down. You would just glue it in. Yeah, you just glue it in. You couldn't, you couldn't fold it. Yeah, but don't you think that would look cute though? Yeah. Uh, what about using one millimeter leather? You could try. Um, sometimes though, Diana, like you definitely could try, but you wouldn't be able to get the one millimeter leather through the eights. You could get it through your sixes. Um, sometimes when you're macrame with leather, I mean, it does work, but if you have a piece that's brittle or something like that, it can break, but I macrame with leather a lot. So but you definitely can't use it through an eight. It won't, it just won't, um, it won't fit. So that's why I used the Irish wax linen today. Um, that I, I just wanted to be able to get it through. You could use like, uh, I wonder if you could use the stuff that you can make mala necklaces out of that cording the um i wouldn't so the uh, she's talking about using eslon um i wouldn't use eslon because it doesn't have enough grip to it it's going to slip and slide on mm -hmm. here and that's why i often people ask me all the time why do i use irish wax linen i like it because it's got what i call gription <laughs> it's, sticky. <laughs> it's sticky it's sticky so it it kind of you know it it sits where you want so what is that trick that you were talking about today with the irish wax linen so you can actually, these are kind of like moving around a little bit, but I don't think it's bad when they do because it makes it a little bit more organic. Um, you can actually take a piece of like um, a paper bag and you can run it down your Irish wax linen to remove a little bit of the excess um, wax because your hands get very, very sticky. Yes. So do we like it just like that? I Yeah, I think you could do it either way. I like the three. Five would look good on either side too. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see a, one braided all the way down. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that out, off of camera. I'm going to show it next week. I don't know. So, okay, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. You know, I'm just thinking that... Eh, maybe. I really like that, Kelly. <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah, look at like that. That's really yeah. cute. Okay, so the way that I would finish this off the back then is I would just tie it into a knot... So we'll just finish this up. I may, may, I might make one for myself. <laughs> uh, I like this. Melanie said you could also use the five millimeter with size eleven if you have a small centerpiece. Five millimeter what? Leather with size eleven seam beads. Uh, mm -hmm. Good luck trying to get this through an eleven. Now you'll hurt your brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, you could, but it would be, it would be, it would be time consuming trying to get that in there. So. I would just tie it in a good, strong double knot like that and then give it a trim and then take a little dot of glue. Let me just get that out of the way there. So nothing technical on the back here. 
And of course, you know, scissors would work better. Of course, I would do a bit, little bit better job than that. Um, I would just take a little dab of glue and put it right there on that knot just to make sure it's nice and secure. So let's repeat that on the other side. So, you know, Wednesdays are about showing you, giving you some ideas, ideas that you can then run with, that you can either completely copy what I've done, or you can then go, ooh, well, what if I did this and create your very own thing? You guys know that I don't care if you completely take my designs and make them all and sell them at, you know, craft fairs or put your stuff in stores. I don't, I don't care. Um, but it's always fun when you can come up with your own designs too, right? So... That's what Wednesdays are kind of about. We're not getting as technical as we do on my Monday videos. And I'm sorry that I did not have a Monday video, but I was so exhausted <laughs> from cleaning the entire house and then moving everything upstairs that I just ran out of steam. Okay, so you can see now that that's got kind of a bend on it um, or it doesn't have a bend on it. So where is our, bend, our bracelet bending pliers? Are they in the other room? You know, like they have, they're purple and they have a... Yeah, they have a little thing and make it easier. They have a thing. Um, are they out there? No, not that I can see. Oh, maybe they're in here. Um, anyway, I'll try and do this with my hands because I don't know where they are. They're in that door. No, I just looked. Anyway, so they, these are really um, malleable. So you can just take this with your fingers. See how easy that is to, to bend? My hands are kind of covered in... Um, in wax right now unfortunately but see how now I just added a bend there so now it will sit I didn't do a very good bend but you could also take your um, pliers like I mentioned before just uh, like that and I would probably do this before I did the whole bracelet makes it lay a bit nicer I was just trying to I was thinking out loud when I was making it but see now it's got a little bit of a bend so it'll sit nicer on mm -hmm. your wrist. Oh, I like that. It looks so good. <laughs> so now on the end, we have some um, cord ends. Um, what is those? those? You know, the, the gluing ones that I like to use all the time. Do I have them on anything? The hammer here? Hammer ones? No, I don't have them on anything. Well, we have some gluing ones, ones that are, um, no, oh. that are a lot nicer, but just for, you know, the sake of economy today, I was using these little um, ribbon ends, which are perfectly fine too. So, I mean, they're just much more affordable because the other ones are like you know a couple bucks a piece so and these fit on perfectly so these are just the 10 millimeter wide ones so i'm just going to put one on either end and of course you're going to want to make this to fit so um, once you add on these ribbon ends and your uh, toggle and the jump rings and everything that's going to add about an extra inch or so depending on how you like to wear your bracelets now, if you've watched me make bracelets before, you know that I don't like to make them uh, too tight because that's a really good way to make them break. So on the one side, which is my um, the loop end, I will always put just one jump ring. If you need to make your, if you made your bracelet a little bit on the small side, you could add extra. But on the other side, I always use three because that makes it so that your bracelet is much easier to do up and you won't have all that pressure and stress on your toggle or on your bracelet because um, that's often how things get broken. Um, people don't give it enough, and I'll show you what I mean. You've probably seen it if you've watched me before. Um, it puts too much stress on it when it's tight. So by giving you this little extra bit, it makes it so much easier to um, to do it. Gosh, I'm getting so that I can't um, talk and, and do things together anymore. <laughs> All right, so we've got three there. Now again, if you um, if three wasn't enough, you could put five. You always want to use odd numbers. And you wouldn't add more to the other side? I, I generally, even. Uh, no, because you don't need to. Because watch, when I do this now. No, I mean, if you're gonna add like five, why not do two on one side? Uh, because if you put two, oh, see, this is upside down too. I have to turn that over because that will drive me nuts. Uh, two will make your, if I put two on here, I'll show you what would happen. Oh, it'll sit sideways. It would, it would go sideways. So right. you have to use um, even on uh, odd numbers. So sorry, I have to turn this over. 
I put it on upside down. Oops. You know, sometimes trying to undo jump rings because I, I got to cut that because I do them up so tight that I can't even see with my old eyes. <laughs> trying to get them. Listen, all right. Trying to get that on there. I thought I had it the right way, but let's do that again. And my hands are super sticky. That Irish wax linen is a fabulous material, but your hands get so sticky that it gets hard to hold on to things. Yeah, we always groan when we have to pick orders with like 12 different 10 meter. <laughs> yeah. Because your hands just get so sticky. So but sticky. But it is a nice product. Do we have any comments there that I need to? No, everyone just says that they really like your design. Oh, thank you. Okay, so when you do this up, now you've got lots of room when you have the three on there. And you can't tell. Like, see the mm -hmm. difference there? You can't yeah. really see that you've got those extras because they're sitting underneath. Right. But imagine if I only had one on there. It would be all bunched up and it would mm -hmm. be really hard to get in there. So having three on one side makes it so much easier. So that is so pretty. Thanks. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I love it, it. I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? You like that? I think it would be really adorable on, like super nice. Yeah. <laughs> you want to try it on? Sure. All right, because I don't have a very good wrist to, to model. Because everybody says, oh, I wish you would um, model it. But I have terrible, <laughs> you know, sores from my precancerous lesion things I've got. All right. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's really cute. So to make our piece today, we're going to be using just a few parts. We have 39 inches of 1.5 millimeter leather. We're also going to be using a button. Now I've chosen this one because I'm uh, sort of deeming this a unisex bracelet. Uh, you could use one with a shank on it. You can use any kind of button, but because this is sort of the most more masculine, but feminine at the same time, uh, this is the one I've chosen. I'm, I also picked these up on a recent buying trip. These are a hexagonal 12 millimeter uh, wood bead. And what I liked about them was that they have a three millimeter hole in there. So as soon as I saw these, I knew exactly what I was gonna do with them. So I bought a lot. Now, if you want to buy them separately, I will leave a link in the description box below the video. You will get a package of four, so you can uh, use them to make this bracelet and have an extra one. And I will show you how to use that. Uh, and if you buy the kit, you will also get four because we're just going to package them up in advance. So you will have plenty of these wood beads and they have that really nice faceting on them. I just think they're really unique. And as far as tools, we're going to be using a ruler, a pair of cutters of some sort. You can use scissors, but you know, I never have them. Uh, we're also going to be using one of my famous barrel knot tubes and we're going to be using a little bit of GS Hypo. So let's get started. All right, so this bracelet is meant to fit everybody, but you're gonna to have to do a little bit of math. You know, it's my least favorite thing in the world to do, but I, um, I did a little bit myself so that uh, hopefully it will make sense and you'll be able to figure out what size to make this for your own bracelet. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure out about 11 inches of my leather. So I'm gonna turn it over so that I've got my short piece in my left hand and then the longer. Um, in the other. So it doesn't really matter. I'm not cutting this or anything. I'm just measuring out at 11 because I want to bring the button down to there. And it doesn't have to be an exact measurement. You've got plenty of leather to do everything you need with. But that was sort of the measurement that I figured worked best. So now if we take that short piece, put the button there, we're right at 11. Okay, so one of the things you want to make sure, I'm just going to move things that I remove things I don't need here. Um, one of the things you want to make sure is that you've always got your longer piece on top. That's the one that we're going to be making our barrel knots with. So you want to make sure that you always switch that to the top. So I'm going to take my tube and I'm going to place it between my leather pieces and I'm going to make three wraps. So I grab that, bring that under, around three times, and I'm working towards my left hand. And then I'm going to take that long piece that I was using and put it through the back end of that tube, holding on to that barrel knot with my fingers because I don't want it to fall apart on me. I'm then going to take it and gently push it down so that it's 
a little bit closer to the button. I don't want it on top of the button sort of thing. You need to have a little bit of wiggle room. Otherwise, you know, things will eventually wear away if there's um, too much rubbing. So there we go. So that's what we want. About that much, it's about a quarter inch of space. All right, so now I'm going to bring back my ruler. And now the, um, again, this is where you're going to have to do some math, but I'll explain at the end how you figure out the sizing on this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knot here and I'm going to place it right at the zero. And I'm going to go over two and a half inches, which is right there. And I'm just going to sort of loosely measure with my fingers. Now I'm going to make sure my long one is on the top, put my barrel knot tube in there, and I'm going to make another three wrap barrel knot. And then I'm going to take the end of that and go through the back side of that tube still holding on to that so it doesn't fall apart. And then I'm going to tighten that up. So before I tighten it up, I'm just going to measure. I've got the beginning there and we've got that just about at two and a half, but I need to make it a little bit, like smooshed over just a bit. So there we go, that's two and a half. So now what I wanna do is my short one is the one that if I was to pull this, you can see it would make that buckle up. So I wanna make sure that these are both even. So I kind of just, you know, make it where I, the, there's no um, gap in there. I'm going to remeasure, and that sort of moved up the, the barrel knot just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, this is about where I wanna move it. So I'm gonna kind of push it down with my fingers and then remeasure. You know, it's always about measuring. So that's two and a half exactly. And now, I'm going to keep my thumbnail on the back side there and tighten that up just a little bit more. And now I know that's not gonna move anywhere and we've got equal leather in there. So now I wanna take one of my uh, faceted wood beads and put both ends through. Now one's gonna be really long and one's gonna be short, but that's exactly what we want. So you just have to get them to match up. Now we're gonna make sure our long one is on the top. So there's my short one. So I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm going to take my tube and I'm going to put it right in between and I want to get as close to that bead as I can. If you start making your barrel knot down here, you're going to find it really, really hard to move that down. So we're going to get it as close as we can and then hope for the best. You know, I will be honest uh, in that sometimes when I'm doing this step, if I'm not paying close enough attention to where that knot is traveling as I'm trying to get it closer to the bead, it will come undone. So you have to kind of watch for it and um, really be mindful. So now you see if I was to try and, I could tighten this up right now, but it's gonna tighten up up there. So I wanna try and wiggle that down. So I just kind of do it slowly. I gotta make sure that the bead is on right where that other knot is too. So just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It can take a little bit of time, but if you are patient, it won't come undone because there's nothing worse than having to pick this apart and do it again. So that's right where I want it. So I'm just gonna take my thumb and kind of push that in. And that's exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna put another one on. So don't be um, upset at yourself if you can't get that to work. You sometimes have to, you know, um, try a little bit and see what works for you. And that's what I have found is trying to get this as close as I can to that bead and then I kind of go like really close with my fingers there and then making sure I've got the long one. I go as close as I can to my fingers. I kind of, you know, I'm really stacking it tight in here, but you will find that if you can do this, you will be closer to that bead and it will just make it so much easier for you at the end of the day. So I'll get this one same thing so keep them nice and parallel to each other as you're moving them down and then you shouldn't have any problem with them coming apart and if you do have it start to come apart just regroup and kind of boss it around and tell that leather where you need it to be so there we go there's our second one and now we're going to put our third one on you can see that this comes together pretty fast the probably the hardest part is going to be figuring out the sizing and I will give you some tips and tricks at the end. So make sure that you, that you watch till the end so that I can guide you a bit on that. All right, so make sure our long was on, on top and it's always on the bottom. So you're gonna flip it over, get that in there nice and tight. 
and make your next barrel knot. What's funny is when I was shopping and I saw these beads, I looked at them and, you know, I don't always know what I'm going to make with beads when I buy them, but I sure did with this one. I was like, that is going to make the coolest looking unisex bracelet. So I tend to like um, jewelry that's a little more on the masculine side for myself. I've always liked that sort of look on myself. Um, so this is like, this is my jam. Love this. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. We've got our three beads on there. So now this section is about, I believe it is uh, two and a half inches. Yeah, so from, this one is a little bit on the small side. So it just depends on how tight you make your um, beaded section, but this should be, this should land somewhere around the two and a half inches. Um, but mine ended up being just a little bit smaller on this one. I think I did this section really, really snug. So as long as it's somewhere between two and a quarter, two and a half, you should be okay. So now this first section here, uh, we did three inches, or sorry, two and a half inches from this knot to the beginning of that knot. So we're going to put this knot at the zero, and we're going to go two and a half inches right there. So that's about where we want the next one. And I'm going to put my barrel knot tube there. And we can adjust this a little bit. We just kind of want... Um, an idea of where it's going to go and then pull that out and before I tighten it up too much I'm just going to measure and that's right at two and a half so I'm just going to put my thumbnail right where I want that not to land and then I push against it just so that it uh, knows where to stop so that's exactly two and a half inches now I'm going to make sure that my uh, long one is on the top again and now we're going to be making our clasp so I just kind of start making mine I go around three times and pull that out and then I just sort of loosely I get it kind of started so I'm not pulling it tight yet and then I just want to make sure that my button will fit and after making millions of things over the years I know it's going to fit but you just kind of want to uh, test it so again what I do now is I take my thumbnail right where I want it I'm going to pull the bottom one um, so that it's tight and then we won't have anything buckling up in there so there's our little clasp and then we're going to give that a little trim and that is as easy as that is to make now I'm not going to do it on camera because when I do it just makes a mess. But we're going to take a little bit of our GS Hypo and I'm going to put a little dab on right here on this. I'm going to use my um, barrel knot tube as a little pointer so that I can show you what I would do here. So I would take my the little tip from the GS Hypo and I would put some glue right there. And then I would take some and put it right where it kind of crosses over right here. And then I would repeat right here and then right the, at that crossover section there. And I might even take a little tiny dab and put some down here on this knot. The knots next to the clasps are the ones that take the most punishment. And so you will find that um, that's where we want to have a little bit of extra. Okay, so this one, just for some ideas for color, this one is the black. All the um, wood beads are exact same color. They're kind of a dark ebony, and they all have that faceting on them. So this is uh, black leather with the silver. And then we have the um, antique bronze with antique gray. And then I made one for a single one for if you wanted for women, if, if you thought maybe if you wanted to wear this and you're a female and you thought maybe this is too much, although I don't think it is, uh, you could make it uh, singular here just put one in the center so I'm going to explain how you would do this one compared to that one and just explain a little bit about sizing too so if you do buy a kit which will be available on our website you just go to the link in the uh, description box and it will take you to my fully secure website and you'll get to choose um, the colors of everything that you wanted to um, use in your piece okay so for the men's bracelet for these two um, as I mentioned I started at the two and a half inch mark this is about two and a half inches. Um, the this little uh, piece from this to this knot is about two and a half inches. So we did two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, 
and with everything all done up, this fits about a seven and three quarter to an eight inch bracelet. So if you're gonna make a smaller one, you would have to deduct a little bit, but now you're not gonna take like a whole inch off because if you take an inch off, that's gonna take it down to like, unless you wanted a six and three quarter, uh, but that's gonna end up being, you know, quite a small bracelet. So you'll have to do a little bit of, you know, figuring it out for sizing. So those ones are constructed exactly the same. Uh, this one looks like it turned out just a little bit larger, um, just a tiny bit, I guess, um, yeah, just a little tiny bit. Uh, and now for the women's, what I did, I call this a women, but uh, you know, a man could wear a man could wear it, no problem. It just it's just using a single bead, and because you are going to get four of these, because we're packaging them up in uh, bags of four. Uh, they will be available on the website and I'll put a link to that in the description box too. But um, so you could make one for your fella and one for yourself. So there you go, you've got extras. So to make this one, what I did was I pulled out my 11 inches. I did exactly the same, pulled my 11 inches out, made my barrel knot on this side. And then I went three inches over because uh, I at first I was like, oh, I got to go smaller. And I thought, oh gosh, no, because this one is only um, seven eighths of an inch. So you kind of, if you're going to make it for a woman, you're going to have to do a little bit of math because that's going to be three inches and that's going to be three inches and that adds seven eighths. So we've six and seven eighths. And then um, by the time you add your clasp, this bracelet with those measurements makes an approximately seven and a half inch bracelet. Now I have a pretty big wrist um, and this one fits me. I don't know if I can get it on under the camera, but let me see if I can maneuver this. This one actually fits me. So if you've got a tiny wrist, you'll really have to like pair back a bit on the measuring, um, on the sizing there. So see how that fits me just perfectly? I love that bracelet. I think it's really, really sweet. So if you've got a tiny uh, wrist, I would probably go, so maybe six and a half, I would maybe take off like half an inch on each side and you should be okay. That would probably work. So I hope you like this one. Like I said before, as soon as I saw these beads, I knew instantly what I was gonna do with them. We have lots of them in stock. So if you wanted to buy the beads by themselves and create your own, um, you know, we will have those available. This is gonna be one of our most affordable bracelet kits. These are only gonna be $10.99. So if you wanted to make these for a craft fair, you could easily sell these for, you know, $24, something like that, um, and make yourself a little bit of money.